So good morning then and welcome back to Thought for the Day. Today we're going to be looking at uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse 7 but before we do that we're going to commit our time to the Lord. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father as we come to you this morning we ask that you would open up your word to us. We pray that we might understand it. We ask most of all that it would have impact upon our lives that we would be more like the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this for Jesus sake. Amen. So let me read to you then Titus chapter 1 and verse 7. Since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, and not pursuing dishonest gain. So yesterday then we were thinking about the uh, quality of leaders uh, of our churches and what God says uh, to be true of them, what should be true of them. Uh, and we heard about how uh, the elders in the church, uh, those who are responsible for the spiritual health of the church, are to be men of good character. And that character is to have been proven in the home, in their home life. Now today we're thinking about that same group of leaders um, and they're called overseers in, in this verse. Now, overseers um, uh, and stewards, uh, as you uh, think about the, what those uh, words mean, uh, carries with it the idea of what elders, uh, is that elders have responsibility to ensure that all of God's resources, that's including his people, are, are wisely used in his work, in God's work. So, um, it may be then, as you're listening to this this morning, that you th are thinking to yourself, well, this really has little to do uh, with me, to do with my daily life. Well, let me stop you there. You need to understand that uh, these instructions or qualifications, they should be true of every believer. They should be true of every believer in Christ. Uh, but they should be most especially clear in those who lead the church. So we're not talking about... Um, something uh, somehow extra for those who are to be leaders in the church uh, they are to be christians but christians of a godly character christians who are clearly seen to be doing what the lord um, has called them to you see god's uh, leading god's people is both a privilege and a responsibility it is uh, it can be a joy but it most certainly is a burden Therefore, it's not surprising that God is very particular about those who should be in leadership responsibility, those who should be in that place. Uh, whatever you discover as you read this list, um, what you need to understand is that unless God is actively at work in a person's life, they will never hit the mark. So we're talking about people who are indwelt by God. We're talking about people who are living in such a way as that they are honouring God in what they do. Now, a Christian is one who should not be of dubious character. That is, he should not have a reputation of being anything other than a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, everyone makes mistakes, so please hear me out on this one, or falls into sin at some point. There's, there's no one who does not do that in their life. But an elder should not be known for or defined by their sin. So there should not be um, any of those that are in leadership of the church that are in, in a position who, are, in the world's eyes, are seen to be um, actively involved in sin or actively involved in living in ways which uh, would call Christ into disrepute. So there are listed here five things that are a definite no for a church leader. They are definite no's for all Christians, I should add that. Um, but most particularly when you're looking for a leader, these things should be obvious. Now, the first thing we discover is that they shouldn't be bullies uh, or constantly wanting their own way. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that because you're a leader, everyone should march to your drum. That's certainly the world's model of leadership. Uh, but a true leader knows that they are following the real leader. They're following the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who is head of the church and they recognize that God's people need to be nurtured and encouraged and not pressed and pressured. Um, we need to understand then that what we're talking about here is a fruit of the spirit. We're talking about uh, the fruit of the spirit, that part of the fruit of the spirit which is, which is uh, gentleness. Uh, those that lead God's people will have 
uh, in their makeup a gentleness and a, a way with them that uh, brings people along with them, that doesn't uh, force their way, but rather brings people as the Holy Spirit leads and moves. Second thing we discover is they should not be easily angered. Another thing uh, that a leader must be able to do uh, when things don't go uh, their way, as, as they often will, is to understand that the that God is in control, that he is the one who has all of the outworking of every decision, including those within the church, um, within his control. If making decisions or, or dealing with people makes your blood boil uh, and every person winds you up, then it's unlikely that you will ever cope with leading God's people or, or the person that you may be thinking of electing to the eldership. If they are easily angered, if there is a, a, a way in them that they just don't seem to be able to uh, keep their temper in those situations, then you need to um, perhaps think twice about having them. Now, Moses was the meekest man. Um, that's what the Bible describes him as. And he was pushed to the point of a uh, breaking point uh, by the people of God. You see, without the fruit of, of patience or long suffering, depending on your version, uh, there is no hope. You see, the Holy Spirit has to be at work in the leader to be able to deal with the conflicts that will come their way, to be able to deal with the hardships and the difficulties, the struggles of leadership. They need to be one who is walking with God and the Holy Spirit producing that fruit in their lives. Third thing, they are not to be controlled by passions. Uh, saying no to ungodliness is very important in your leadership team. If, if they can't say no to um, ungodliness, then it's likely that that will have an impact upon uh, the church. If your leader is so overwhelmed by his responsibilities that alcohol seems to be a good idea, or, or his lusts get the better of him, it can only end in disaster, can it? It can only uh, be detrimental to what God is doing. So part of being a Christian is surrendering over to God all the areas of our lives that we struggle with. An acknowledgement that the problems are too big for us to deal with, to, for you know, too big for us to handle on our own. Now, one who leads the church must have in mind that all his battles are the Lord's. So it is the Lord that will give the victory in these things. It is the Lord that will help them with their struggles. And the fruit of the spirit that we're talking about, of course, is uh, self-control, isn't it? It's that understanding that uh, with God's help, we can say no to ungodliness. We can say no to those things um, which so easily ensnare us. And linked with that, so if you like the fourth point, although I'm still including it within the third in the, in the way that I'm looking at it, linked to that is violence. Now, if you feel that your battles are um, against flesh and blood, that you know somehow you need to win victory over the people in front of you, or somehow that you feel that you need to gain control, uh, it, in order to gain control that you need to lash out, then it's clear that the Spirit is not working in you um, his kindness. You see, kindness uh, deals with people in such a way as uh, that you know their actions might be unkind to you, but you still continue to show kindness in the way that Christ shows kindness to us. So if there is not that, not that reality in the way that we are living, if there's not that evidence in our life, then in leadership we should not be. And the last thing that we have brought out here is this whole business of, of not being greedy. Now, greed or dishonest gain comes from a heart that only has room for self, doesn't it? It's a preoccupation with your own life and with your own comfort. And if you have a leader who is in that position, who is concerned about only concerned about themselves, and you know it can creep up on leaders. Uh, you know they are going on in the church and and uh, seem to be going quite well, and yet they get comfortable in the position they're in, and they begin to think only about themselves. So the decisions that are made in the church become about them and not about um, Christ. Now it was said of Christ that he had nowhere to lay his head. He was not concerned with his life or his own comfort. Instead, his own life was lived for others. What fueled such selflessness? Well, love. Unless it's clear that the Holy Spirit is working in you, the love of Christ, stay away from leadership and avoid choosing those who show signs of self-seeking. What we have discovered today, as we've looked at this verse, just one small verse, is that a leader without Christ is no leader at all. 
Let's pray. Loving Father, we ask that you would help us to recognise what a good leader is and to see what you have said and to appoint only those that bring you glory and honour in the church. Lord, if we are failing in any of these areas, we pray that you would work by your spirit in us to change us. And we thank you, Lord, that you've promised to uh, that work that you've begun in us that you will see through to completion. And we rejoice in this for Jesus' sake. Amen.